Hello, my name is Jordi John Jimenez, and I'm the head of technology of the 5G Media Action Group. We are an association based in Geneva, and we are gathering together stakeholders from the media industry and from the ICT domain in order to evaluate different opportunities that 5G may bring to the media industry. Today, under this presentation, Media and Beyond 5G Opportunities and Challenges, I would like to go through some of the activities that we are we are uh, conducting and also well, present some of the ideas we have in mind uh, on the future of, of 5G and, and well, the next steps in terms of wireless IP technologies. So basically at the moment we are having a look at 5G, we are looking at the opportunities across the entire media value chain and that involves, for instance, from content creation where we see 5G playing a role, for instance, in these scenarios in which uh, we need to connect uh, microphones, we need to connect um, cameras, and in the end, well, take profit of uh, the high performance uh, KPIs of 5G in order to, to be able to deliver such, such use cases. In terms of contribution, we also see a 5G playing a role there. For instance, when you have journalists covering events somewhere, and you can benefit from 5G networks and 5G connectivity in order to get that signal straight away to the studio or to the cloud to do some kind of editing. And actually, in that domain, uh, in the production domain, uh, we see now opportunities and well, even the, the situation with the COVID, we see more and more need uh, to go IP and also to go remote. And then 5G with all the capabilities in terms of uh, guaranteeing quality of service, in terms of low latency, in terms of high bandwidth, well, we see uh, a lot of benefits uh, for, the, for the media industry in these production and remote production scenarios. In terms of distribution, let's say the next step, so uh, putting all this content out for the user, we see 5G playing a critical role in terms of uh, infrastructures, for instance, leveraging cellular, terrestrial, and satellite infrastructures, but also well, getting close to, to the current services that are offered uh, online or over the internet using CDNs. Well, how to improve all those services, how to improve the quality of service, the coverage, and in the end, the, the user experience. And well, final final step in terms of consumption. Well, it's clear that we see an explosion at the moment on all these platforms and applications from uh, well linear TV and radio to on-demand catch-up content, podcasts, and so on, and even more consumed everywhere in in any device. Well, we see here uh, watches. We, we see smartphones, but we also see uh, the role of connected cars with uh, car infotainment systems just getting connected uh, IP. So that's all the different domains where we see 5G and let's say wireless IP technologies uh, playing an important role. And well, just going to the first domain, media production, well, as I said, we see remote production news gathering, outdoor broadcast, and for instance, also the possibility of using your own networks, your own media campuses or non-public networks for, a, well, arranging your setup of equipment and making use of 5G or, and the features coming with 5G to make a, this kind of more flexible uh, production uh, setups. So. Where are we in this domain? Where are we in terms of 5G and content production? Well, uh, in SA1, uh, during release 16, there was some work to onboard requirements for the media industry in order to realize some of the, some of the use cases that where we see 5G uh, playing an important role. And this is now becoming, let's say, more real. So this is now becoming standardized. Uh, we see work 
going on in network slicing, which is a PHR that, of course, uh, helps in, in that domain, and also in non-public networks. So, as I said, the possibility of building your own network with your with your equipment connected to it and, and being able, let's say, to use, to, to leverage the, the properties of 5G. We also see work in release 17 on enhancing this, uh, also on security, for instance, on non-public networks, uh, timing and synchronization, very important for, for production, and also work on proximity services or this device to device where uh, we also have some, some use cases. In general, well, just to point out one of the key topics that we are, that we are uh, looking at is uh, non-public networks for media production. Uh, and we see, well, we see several steps of several components. Uh, in principle, from a, starting from a technology neutral point of view. So you have equipment that uh, is already IP capable, let's say. But well, you keep the existing the existing systems and you just attach them to the existing 5G uh, network or, or 5G infrastructure. But we also see uh, a step forward in, for instance, uh, technology convergence, so that uh, equipment, uh, EMSC equipment, becomes 5G native and is already able to to get connected to to 5G or to get onboarded directly to 5G, making use of all, all the functionalities that, that 5G provides. In that sense, well, and in any case, uh, Spectrum is, is needed, the Spectrum for media production is needed, and well, we are analyzing several several options in, in that domain, well, but recognizing in the end uh, that it's important to to have a, a global harmonization of a spectrum in order to create a big market, let's say, of equipment that is interoperable across uh, different countries and, and across different regions, so that well, we, we end up in in, in global uh, equipment uh, devices and so. On. Important also to have a look at the isolation of data and uh, and let's say to have the possibility to manage uh, the network, these non-public networks, and, and to have control on the traffic, and also on uh, automatization, as uh, well the complexity of uh, these setups sometimes is beyond the expertise of the media company. So we, we are having a look at all these, at all these uh, aspects. In terms of characteristics and features, well, this is, I think, something that we are starting to see on board it in 5G, and we are sure that it will, this will continue with uh, the evolution of 5G and, and, and towards 6G and so on. And so on. We have very particular requirements from, from media production in terms of synchronization, in terms of high uplink throughput that generally well, high, high throughput is generally achieved in the downlink, but, but not in the uplink. Uh, we have issues uh, with uh, mobility and, and deployment flexibility. And in the end, well, there are several components that, in any case, need to be worked more in order to be able to deliver all these use cases that, that we have in mind for uh, media production. In terms of distribution, we are having a look at different aspects, uh, well, achieving a scalable distribution with unicast, multicast, and, and 5G broadcast, achieving uh, that, the, that these services are available under mobility and under uh, global coverage. Here, for instance, terrestrial and satellite architectures uh, may play a role in achieving this uh, well, cost-effective network deployment with universal coverage. And we are also having a look at opportunities that 5G or related technologies, let's say, in the in the ecosystem of 5G, may bring to media distribution. Case of edge caching or edge computing, uh, the onboarding or specific of a specific media network functions on the on the 5G network or the use, for instance, of network slicing for guaranteed quality of service. Where are we? Well, we know under LTE there has been work on onboarding requirements for broadcasting, 
requirements from the from the media industry for for doing a uh, well linear TV and radio uh, broadcast. This work uh, has finished in release 16 with the so-called LTE-based 5G terrestrial broadcast. But, well, we see that this does not uh, finish here because, well, with 5G new radio and with the 5G core, we also have uh, opportunities to, to have a look at how to distribute all this content. We have work on 5G satellite and harmonization uh, or the hybrid integration of satellite and, and terrestrial. We have work going on on media streaming architectures. We have work on, uh, for instance, traffic split across different uh, access networks and even between fixed and wireless networks. And release 17 is already coming with new opportunities, as I said, around multicast and broadcast that we need to follow, understand, and, and in the end, uh, analyze for, for, for being used for, for media distribution. In the end, what kind of services? Well, as, you, as I said, there is a, an explosion in terms of these applications that are available everywhere, uh, in, in smartphones, in, in cars, in even watches and, and so on. So content needs to be available anywhere at any time and well, for users to be able to consume it uh, using any device. And, and when we refer to content, we mean, uh, of course, linear uh, content, traditional TV, radio, also live sports, live events, and so on. But also a lot of non-linear content that is consumed uh, and uh, currently, and that allows, for instance, a, a higher degree of personalization uh, towards the end user. And as I said, different environments uh, for 5G media, media distribution are emerging. We see consumption at home, we see connected cars, we see consumption on the move, and even, uh, well, we have here a picture of flight entertainment systems, which are also also in the scope and that well, where, where 5G uh, may, play, may play a role. In the end, all these services would need to be delivered with scalability, with universal coverage, with guaranteed quality of service, regardless of network congestion, uh, interoperability across different networks and different architectures need to be ensured, uh, free access for users when it comes to public service media is something uh, desirable, and uh, in the end, well, having a look at how to sustain distribution cost towards the service providers. It's, it's another, another very important uh, topic. In the end, looking beyond 5G, where we see options for future uh, analysis are on the efficient integration of wireless infrastructure, cellular, terrestrial, satellite, um, well, leveraging cloud native approaches. Uh, it doesn't make much sense, let's say, uh, for a media company to to dedicate some development for current cloud systems and not being able to port all of this, for instance, uh, to, to 5G Edge uh, when it comes to, to computing uh, resources. We need, uh, well, we need to continue work on integration and access for the vertical industries, in this case for the media industry, with, uh, well, APIs, and with, uh, let's say, with real opportunities to interact with the network and, and to, to bring, let's say, 5G uh, or to, to, to bring closer 5G to the, to the vertical industries. Automation is also a very important point, given the complexity of the systems, as well as security, trust, and service integrity of the content that, be, that is being put in the 5G network. And that's it. Many thanks.